Hi, this is Terry. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I had a friend reach out to me and let me know that they were going to be in Paris for a day and wanted to know where to go. I was like, a day? That's absolutely impossible. Can't you cut your trip short someplace else so you can have at least a couple days? Apparently not. So I gave it some thought and after taking into consideration that they're traveling with their teenage son, who apparently has his nose in his phone all the time, I came up with a suggested itinerary, starting with the Eiffel Tower, and then coffee and croissants on Rue Claire, and then walking over to the Hotel des Invalides that has the Musée de l'Armée and the Napoleon tomb, then through the Rodin Gardens, because it's free and it's along the way, and then a walk over to the Louvre for lunch at Cafe Marley, which overlooks the plaza outside the Louvre, followed by a walk over to the Marais so that they could go to the Picasso Museum, which is absolutely fantastic and not enough people go to it because it's not right down there by the Louvre. And then a riverboat cruise for dinner along the Seine. I figured it hit all the high points, would pr provide plenty of Instagrammable moments if the sun wanted that, and then a great place for pictures all throughout. Isn't taking them directly by the Notre Dame, but you can see that from across the Seine as you're walking towards the Marais. They're going to be exhausted after that, but I think it's a really great itinerary for a single day to hit all the top spots in the center of Paris. But this is really what the challenge is with traveling, is there's so much more to see and do. Generally, I have massive FOMO because I want to do it all and I don't want to miss anything. And I have to keep reminding myself that most of the time when I'm traveling, it's for a taste or a goûter. I also remind myself that I can always go back again but then the lure of new places um, is always highly alluring and it's hard to go back to some of the places that I've been to already. I was really struggling with this with my trip with um, my husband Zeke for May. We're going to Italy and we're going to France for about three weeks after he does a two week cycling trip in Portugal. I couldn't figure out a theme or anything to hold the trip together. And so I really struggled with you know, where to go between Rome and Paris, which is where we I have my flight in and where I have my flight out of. Finally, I, I after watching a ton of videos and doing some research, I was able to start to put some anchors into the sand and the trip started coming together. So right now we're flying into Rome, renting a car after a couple of days, going to Umbria for a couple nights, staying at the same place I stayed at with my son uh, this past year. Then we're gonna go to uh, Verona, which we've never been to before, then to Venice, then to Bergamo, and then uh, dropping the car in Milan, flying to Bordeaux, which we've never been to, and then up to Paris so we can stay there for a couple of days. So flights have been booked, including the flight from Milan to Bordeaux. Uh, the car rental has been booked and most of the hotels have been booked. I still need hotels for Paris and for Bordeaux, but I'll be figuring that out sometime in the next month or so. A lot of people ask me how I plan these trips. Where do I get the ideas from? And my answer is I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I get guidebooks from Barnes and Noble. Uh, I ask friends and I read blog posts and articles. And then what I do is I put all the ideas into a shared Google sheet that I then share with whoever I'm traveling with. It might be, you know, my husband for this trip. It was my son, Adam, for the last trip and my other child, Finn, for the for the previous trip. We like to go to places that are not frequently traveled or are a little bit more obscure and uncommon. And with my husband, those that are definitely not as crowded. So as usual, I'm doing most of the planning for this next trip. It's really not that uncommon. I care about most of the things more than they do, whether it was my husband or the two kids. Um, and I also have to have some sort of a theme around it so that I can be making decisions. Otherwise, it's really hard for me to decide what it is that we're gonna tackle during that particular trip. So the most recent one with my son, we did philosophy, food, and art, AKA the fart tour. And the theme for the trip with my other child, Finn, was all anchored around um, visiting people that we knew in all of the different places. And that's how we were able to make decisions on where we were going to go. For this next trip, I had Zeke watch a lot of videos with me so he could get a sense of the various different places. And then I could get a sense of what he wanted from the trip because 
it's not all about me. There are compromises that are going to be made. We will not be going to nearly as many museums as Adam and I did. We will be doing a little bit of cycling, but not to the extent that he normally does with his friends. So once the big stuff is planned, even though I have all sorts of ideas, I don't really research them as much as I know other people do. I mean, some of the research that I've seen some of my friends do has just been mind boggling. They figured out restaurants and locations and places to take Instagram pictures. And frankly, I, it's just too much attention to detail and I can't be bothered. I wish I could because there are some times that I feel like we've missed things or um, we've gone a direction where there was absolutely nothing and um, we wasted some time. But I also like the sponta spontaneity of not having everything figured out and being able to kind of wing it as we're going along. So we'll definitely bring a guidebook. We'll have the maps, of course. And then um, a lot of times we'll go ahead and use data to research what's what's available in the area or what restaurants are there. And once again, because I don't do all sorts of the super detailed research, sometimes the restaurants we go to aren't perfect, but sometimes you just need a meal uh, at a time when something is open. I know that travel planning can be really hard for some people, especially with their, when they're not familiar with the area. And so they would like to have everything detailed for them. Zeke and I, for our next new project, recorded a video on Sebastopol and Santa Rosa and some things to do there and paired up with one of the blog posts that I put together, hoping to make it super easy if somebody wants to uh, go and visit the area and isn't quite sure where to stay or where to eat or what to do in, let's say, a two to three day getaway. Um, we'll be doing more and more of those, like uh, get away for Denver. Um, I have an idea for one for three days in the Central Coast based on a trip that Finn and I did last summer. And of course, we have our five um, cheap date nights in San Francisco and five cheap dates in Palo Alto. Um, some people would like an a la carte menu and other people would like it more like a fixie prixie, as we call it in the meat household, where it's all laid out and they just have one or two choices to make. I know we're all very different on how we would like to do trip and travel planning because sometimes it can be pretty stressful, especially if it's going to be expensive and you want to make sure that you're not wasting your money. I really appreciate it when my friends trust me enough to reach out and ask me where to go, what to do, what to see in the various places that I've been. Um, I'm actually pretty honored that, uh, that some people do that. Whenever some people think of France, I'm one of the first people that they reach out to which makes me want to travel even more around France so I can be an even better resource for people when they have questions. And this ties into the travel journalism that I've started doing, or I've really been doing for a couple of years, but I'm now labeling it as such, and um, sharing in blog posts and videos um, where to go, what to see, etc. So if you're thinking about a trip and need some ideas, feel free to reach out to me at pilotingyourlife at gmail.com or just drop a note in the comment section. I will ha be happy to respond. And if I haven't been there, maybe I'll add it to my places to go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you have some fun travels in store for you this year. And as always, let go of perfection, take some risks, and above all else, have some fun.